Welcome to the ISR channel. Welcome back to my channel. I come to you today um, with a little chat on being natural and honestly my journey and figuring out what the heck it means to be natural and what the heck are sulfates and parabens. I went uh, completely natural about two years ago. Well, I think it was in 2015. Yep, August 21st, 2015. I'll never forget the day. I had a uh, permed hair. It was kind of like a short mohawk style. I um, perm my hair maybe once every six to seven months or whatever have you because my hair really took very well uh, to perm and chemicals. Like I didn't have, I wasn't one of those chicks who had to perm my hair every four to six weeks is what they recommend or whatever have you. But I woke up one day and it I didn't go natural for a specific reason. Like, oh my gosh, this is the next best thing to do. Or I had some life altering changing moment. That just wasn't what, what it was for me. For me, it was more so just about uh, becoming and loving more of who I am and who I, who I was becoming to be. And just one day was like, hey, I think I'm going to go natural. Like, I think that I, I really want to see what my hair is capable of. I think it'll be a step into womanhood. I think it'll be a step in the right direction of knowing and loving and becoming me. And I did experience some extreme challenges because um, I went really, really short. I'll put a, po a picture up uh, <laughs> at the end of this video. I went really, really short. I remember the first day that I chopped it all off. I wasn't expecting to go as short as I did, but when I did, it was like, oh my gosh, I need some earrings. I went from having not long, luxurious hair. Like I said, it was very short in a mohawk, but it had it was very full, you know? And I went to almost completely bald. I think uh, my partner at the time, when I seen her, she looked at me and she couldn't even say any words. She couldn't even really look at me for that matter. Uh, it was really life-altering changing moment you know remember um going through i became like a serious product junkie i were having to just explore all kinds of products to see what would fit my hand i'm still in that phase even two years later i mean of course my hair has grown significantly since then or you know just this trial period has has started i mean i'm really happy with the growth um it's just been growing and i'm loving it um but anyway Upon my journey of going natural, I came about like, you know, things that you shouldn't do to your hair and things that you shouldn't use in your hair. And that was sulfates and parabens. I watched loads of YouTube videos. I read tons of documents, well, watched tons of documentaries, read tons of articles. And I just remember saying, no sulfates, don't use sulfates, don't use anything that has parabens. Watch the shampoos that you use in your hair. Watch the conditioners that you use in your hair. And I just went by it like, okay, I didn't even know what the heck sulfates or a paraben was. I was just like, okay, I'm just going to not use it. They say in the natural community, don't use it, so I'm not going to use it. And that's exactly what I did. But I didn't realize that I didn't even know what the heck a sulfate or a paraben was. So I'm coming to you just in case you, like myself, are in a natural hair journey or whatever state of life you're in and you want to know what the heck a sulfate or a paraben is, I have the definition. So... What is a sulfate? It's acid, sodium, lauryl sulfate. I think that's why they have the acronym, the SLS for it. Substance that reduces the surface tension of water, which helps shampoo or product loosen the grease from your hair and scalp. Parabens are chemicals that aid in preventing fungi from growing in your hair and scalp and the rest of your products. So I guess that's why they say don't use sulfates or parabens because, um, they're, they're harsh chemicals that do damage to your hair. But on the flip side, I understand why, you know, so many things that we use have sulfates and have parabens because they aid in taking fungi or preventing fungi from growing in your hair and in your products. And, you know, they the sulfates basically loosen the grease and the grit and the dirt from your scalp, which is why they use it in a lot of shampoos. One way to tell if um, a product has sulfates or parabens in it is like when you use a shampoo and you get that lather, that white bubbly lather that's how you know your product has so face and parent i'll leave that for another video as to why i really don't shampoo anymore i just co-wash um and well i shampoo once a year i think well once every six months maybe twice a year but i mainly for the most part just uh co-wash and here's some random facts that i got from a google article uh these are chemicals that are used in a lot of beauty products like lotions lipstick scrubs etc so on that point, I find it really crazy to me that 
some people promote don't use sulfates and parabens in your hair and then don't use any products that have sulfates or parabens. I'm natural. I'm sulfate free. I'm paraben free. But then you have on a lipstick, like a MAC lipstick or a very common lipstick or you use certain lotions that actually have sulfates and parabens. So it's kind of like a contradictory. You can't really say you're sulfate free or paraben free when, just because you don't use it in your hair when you're using it in other products like your perfumes, your lotions, your moisturizers, face wash, anything like that. Um... Me, I am, like I've disclosed in some of my other videos, I am, in fact, a toiletry and product junkie, known for a fact. And while I, I too, well, I never really proclaimed to be sulfate or paraben free. I just stopped using it in my hair. Um, I'm not going to stop using certain products, like certain body products, like lotions and, and, and moisturizers and definitely not perfumes because they have sulfates and parabens in them. Maybe eventually one day I will, but as for now, no, that's not going to happen. I'm, I love my products way too much, and um, I just thought that was a good point to know that, you know, while you don't want to use sulfates in your hair, be careful if you're trying to be like completely sulfate and paraben free because they are found in other products that we use on a daily basis chemicals like parabens are found in breast tumors and sulfate lives res leaves residue in the heart lung and brain wow whoa um i think that's another reason why people who are sulfate and paraben free go so hard because the chemicals you know can get access to your heart your brain and your lungs and of course that's never good i'm still not going to stop using them but it does give me a different perspective into you know the long haul and being more aware and maybe using in moderation maybe i that's all i have for that <laughs> these are chemicals that cause a number of problems for your hair like drying irritating your scalp hair loss and fading your color so okay as you can see i have color in my hair i did this color i want to say about say i did this color back in january and i think i reapplied the color again in maybe march and that was it and it's still like it's just like i said my hair was always pretty good at taking to chemicals and, and certain products and things that i guess you're not supposed to use in your hair it's always been really good with taking it so i haven't colored it since and, and actually i'm trying to get rid of the color but i'm just gonna naturally let it grow out i did one thing i did notice about using sulfates and parabens is that once i stopped using them in my hair my hair didn't dry as out as much. I didn't have any that much shedding or, you know, it wasn't as brittle. Um, in fact, using a certain co-washes and my hair is a bit more, it, it retains moisture a bit much more opposed to when I was just shampooing like crazy and, and using different products that had sulfates and parabens in them. I have noticed that, you know, it's less, to, it's less likely to break off and it's less likely to be dry. In terms of fading your color, I guess that's true. I mean, I'm not really really sure because even when I had when I wasn't like you know natural and I had a perm and I still put plenty of color in my hair um and I was using products that had of course sulfates and parabens they didn't really fade my color at all and I've had blonde hair I've had bright bright red hair I've, I've done black I've done um purple berry and they never really faded my color, but you know, it, different strokes for different folks. And parabens are easily identifiable in chemicals. So these are a bunch of words that I don't know if I'm pronouncing them correctly, but maybe you can benefit from them. So parabens are easily identifiable in chemicals such as butyl paraben, methyl paraben, profili paraben. At the end of the day, it has paraben at the end of that chemical. So if you look in your, your chemicals and you see the ingredients and it says like something something paraben has parabens in them or be careful my way of seeing if they have parabens or sulfates sulfates are pretty you know it's self-explanatory too it's just like parabens but if it has like a bin at the end of it like a b-e-n-s you might want to look up what that chemical is and see if it has a parab if it's like an actual unidentifiable paraben i'm not the the natural hair guru or you know i'm still learning every day i literally find products and sometimes i feel like they work until i find a better product and say okay that one works definitely better i like i said for me i don't shampoo uh as much as i used to i literally just co-wash i am in the process of training my hair to have a weekly regimen like i try to co-wash it once a week and twist it or braid it or you know do something with it that's when i've started seeing some really good hair growth like this i want to say with my hair being like this i recently had some twists in my hair for about a week and then i just took them out so it's in desperate need of a wash a co-wash and 
definitely just anything that has low manipulation for your hair is good for your hair anything that retains moisture is good for your hair again um i'm not really into the porosities or hair types because i tried to look at it and i tried to identify what types of hair my hair is and then i found that i'm like 3c or 3a in certain spots and then the majority is like 4c just overall overwhelming try to identify what exactly hair type i have um trimming i trim my i used to okay so the person who cut my hair in 2015 i seen her that was in august when she chopped it all off and then i went to her again right before new year's which was december 30th december 31st and she was supposed to put, cut my hair into a style and it didn't come out that right so that's the last time i've ever had my hair professionally cut otherwise i I've, I've looked on youtube and just seen how to like you know trim your ends and go for it from there and i try to do it once every six or seven months which i'm gonna tell you is a lie right now because i just trim my hair when i start seeing breakage so that works for me when i start noticing my hair breaking off a lot and just unnecessary breakage and unnecessary hair loss i'm like okay yeah it's time for a hair trim and i don't like doing it but you know i did it i want to say maybe three weeks ago i gave myself a hair trim i put in these twists that i had in for about a week and when i took my twist out i noticed like this extreme amount of hair growth i was like whoa like my afro was like really really big so clearly trimming does do well and it's, it has its purposes but i wouldn't recommend trimming your hair every four to six weeks like some people say or every three months or every six months whatever works for your hair is what you should do. how i lock in my moisture i would say definitely lots of water i spray my hair with water and definitely coat it with the jamaican black castor oil speaking of jamaican black castor oil it stinks the regular one it smells like play-doh clay-doh whatever it just smells really really bad like i would never use it but i found the mango and lime one the flavored flavored scented one is really really good then they have different uh scents like lavender and cedar wood and all this other kind of stuff that you can use but i would definitely recommend using some jamaican black castor oil because i put it on my edges i just sweat my hair spray my hair with some water and then just take it and you know just get that good old moisture and when i do my weekly regimens i notice that um when I'm before I twist it, I'll put on some Jamaican, I'll coat it with some Jamaican black castor oil, and then my hair is moisturized for the entire week, which also helps with detangling. Because, and that's another thing, when I detangle, oh my gosh, if I'm seeing a lot of hair shed, I am just like so depressed inside because I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? My hair is not growing, it's kind of hit a plateau, it's not really moving the way that it should be but you know you do what you have to do hair hair is gonna grow it's gonna break off it's gonna shed don't not live your life or do certain styles because of your you're afraid of not growing your hair this piece that i have on here says products that are free from chemicals keep the hair moisturized longer which will make your hair less prone to breakage and split ends which is basically what i just said so if you like this video be sure to like comment share and subscribe definitely subscribe to the channel i'll have if you want to see some more videos and i can go more in depth about natural hair products and what i've been doing to get my hair to where it's at today not saying it's the best but i am loving this little fro in fact it's like a medium-sized fro once you see the picture of how i cut my hair all off into where it's at today you'll be like oh snap <laughs> so clearly i'm doing something right until next time peace light and love Don't, you didn't think I was going to let you go without asking you to subscribe again, right? So if you have not done so already, please do me a favor and subscribe to the ISR, ISR Realness channel. Like, comment, and, sh and share if you would. It would really, 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 really do me a, a great service. And why not allow me to serve you realness, right? So don't forget, like, comment, share. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel. <laughs> There I go laughing again. Love you.